You look in awe around this torchlit underground room. It appears to be a laboratory. A wizard's laboratory. The shelves are filled with numerous items. You spot an empty flask. You pick up the empty flask and take it with you. You see a bottle labeled Toad Spittle. You pick up the bottle labeled Toad Spittle and take it with you. There is a bottle labeled Toadstool Powder. You pick up the bottle labeled Toadstool Powder and take it with you. You spy a bottle labeled Saffron. You pick up the bottle labeled Saffron and take it with you. Here is a bottle labeled Nightshade Juice. You pick up the bottle labeled Nightshade Juice and take it with you. This bottle is labeled Ground Fish Scales. You pick up the bottle labeled Ground Fish Scales and take it with you. Perhaps this was Mananan's previous pet. The shells hold skeletons of small animals and birds, some human skulls and bones, and other odd instruments whose use you do not know. The wizard has a desk and stool sitting in the corner. There is nothing that looks awfully useful on that desk. There is a chest sitting next to the shelves. It's locked. You take a closer look at the wizard's work table. Covered with gold trimmings, the old book's leather cover is cracked and worn, its pages yellowed and brittle. The title, however, is clear. The Sorcery of Old. You eagerly thumb through page after page of what you assume to be magic formulas the ink of the old handwriting is faint and barely readable. Most of the formulas are indecipherable, but a few are in a language you know. You treat the old book with great care. As you can tell, it contains recipes for some very old and powerful magic spells. Your hands shake as you realize this book could be the key to your escape from the evil Mananan. You add a pinch of saffron to the vial marked Rose Petal Essence. With trepidation, you prepare to recite the Flying Like an Eagle or a Fly incantation. Spirits of air, cloud and breeze, lend me your wings that I may seize the opportunity to fly. Allow me passage through the sky. You wave the magic wand over the vial of rose petal essence. You look at Mananan's spell book. You pour the cup of ocean water into the bowl. You light the charcoal brazier. You place the bowl of ocean water on the charcoal brazier. You remove the bowl before it starts to boil. You add a spoonful of mud to the bowl.
the cream-colored toadstool powder is finely textured and nearly odorless. You add the toadstool powder to the bowl. You save the empty jar for reuse. You blow into the steaming bowl. With trepidation, you prepare to recite the Brewing a Storm incantation. From nature, I now call on thee, the power of the land and sea. When brew is stirred, all should be warned, the might of the approaching storm. You wave the magic wand over the bowl. You carefully pour the storm brew into the empty jar. The charcoal brazier burns out. You scan. You quickly pull the levers in the correct sequence. You pull out your magic map. You feel a strange pulling sensation. Hurry along there, Mildred. <sighs> yes, George. Mama! My button's not done up! Button? Haven't you taught him anything, Mildred? It's a bit difficult for him, George. Just right. So you take it with you. It's just an empty container. You can... You fill the flask with ocean water. The eagle's tail.
The cave is bare and barren. The only life left in this cave is a lone mandrake root. The strange woman stands before you expectantly. Her ageless face is tranquil, but there's faint urgency behind her gaze. Welcome, young one. I saw you through the telescope, but it was a dream. Neither dreaming nor awake. It was I you saw. Who are you? You may think of me as an oracle. Beyond that lies knowledge I cannot impart. A better question for you to ask is, who am I? I do not understand. Do you know your identity? Your ancestry? Your heritage? My name is Gwydion, a servant to the wizard Mananan, and I have lived in Ludor all my life. As for my parents, I have never known them. Mananan told me that they died when I was very young. Yes. Too young to remember. Too small to resist. I don't understand. A lie lurks in shadow and gives way to the luminance of truth. The time has come for your enlightenment. Hello? Where am I? These are but visions of light long faded. Observe what you may, but the time of influence has passed. The child of the cradle stirs, as if the air has become too cold for him. You wonder if you could stand a closer look. Mananin. I thank the father for this timely gift. No! That was... I was that boy. Mananin abducted me. Everything he told me was a lie. I need to know more. Tell me. Then speak, my child. Ask. My name? Do I have a name? Other than the one Mananan gave me, I mean? Your name is Alexander. Prince Alexander. You are heir to your father's throne. My father is a king? Yes, a very good and noble one. It may come to pass that you shall meet him. Where do I come from? You hail from the kingdom of Daventry. Once, it was a place of great beauty. Oldest is the magic that lies deep within that realm, and the earliest histories are connected to it. An important part of it is to play in great events to come. But this should not concern you. The land has suffered much in recent times, and must be healed. Why must the land be healed? Great misfortunes have plagued Daventry since the arrival of the Three-Headed Dragon. Each year it demands a sacrifice, in exchange for sparing the land from its fiery wrath. At first, the king refused, and now, years later, the land burns still from the dragon's flame. How may it be healed? The power to do so can be found in a place once linked to the greater land. You will come to it in time, where your value shall be measured by the way you measure value. Come again? You will know when it is time to know. Why does the king do nothing? There was a time when the king would have risked all to save another. Now, he has barely the spark of life within him. The years have been hard for the royal family. Grief has taken its toll, 
and the king has borne the brunt of their anguish. Now, with the dragon holding the kingdom's future in its fiery jaws, he has not the spirit to fight the evil. The curse endures still. Curse? It is beyond what is yours to reckon with. Concern yourself not with it. Why does the king do nothing? There was grief has taken its toll, and the king has borne the brunt of the anguish. Now, with the dragon holding the king curse, it is be Who are my family? You are the son of Graham and Valanese, and the twin brother of Rosella, who is even now in great peril. A sister? In peril, did you say? The dragon came and took nest upon the highest summit. From there, it receives its dues. Lately, its price is the highest yet. Rosella? Yes. She is to be the next sacrifice. Go now, Prince Alexander. Deal with your enslaver. And venture forth to aid your family at a time they need you most. Thank you, Oracle. The cactus signposts the desert beyond. You see stray boulders from the mountain lying around. This cactus is of a spineless variety. A snake has shed its skin and left it in the desert sun. You retrieve the dried snake skin from the hot desert sand. It's delicate and could easily crumble. An ancient door has been set into the cliff face. You don't see that every day. Your eyes adjust to the dark as you struggle to breathe the putrid air. What is this place?
A perfectly smooth, uniquely colored stone sits upon a natural pedestal. If you would look upon me, foolish boy, then reveal your true self. How? Oh. Hear me in earnest and respond in kind. A blind man asks you to describe the sunset. to sell you a rotten apple from her basket. A harem slave asks for help. Her master will beat her once he learns of her escape. She offers her services. of the world's worst stitches asks for shelter. After many years of correspondence with a lady, you propose. Upon meeting her in person, she is far less attractive than she described. You are not repelled by me? transformed. The enchantment is broken. Forgive me. I have been too hasty in appraising you. It would seem that I possess something of the hard-heartedness I accused you of having. Considering my predecessors, I think your opinion was understandable. How can I thank you? The woman's true form is one Please, there must be something I can do, or offer you, perhaps. Giving away your pos- Giving away- Keeping your hands to your If it would please you, I would have this unique stone. It would, though I am loath to ask. I would have you first do a favor for me. Certainly. I have all but forgotten my own appearance, and I should dare not enter the town again until I am made more gentle to the eye. Assuredly. You would make not even the most dazzling sunrise more attractive to the senses. I thank thee for the compliment. However, I still desire a means to appraise myself. I have none. For once transformed into a gorgon, all were destroyed in my terrible rage. Bring me a looking glass, and I will gladly grant you the stone. I will do as you ask, my lady. I am most grateful to you. You may have the stone if that is your will. Thank you, lady. You take the smooth stone. Farewell, good.
good sir. Yet before we part, I wish to make mention of something I have sensed in your aura. Whatever wretched life you have thus far lived, I feel a great change encroaching upon you soon. For good or ill, I know not. Heed well my advice. Beware those who would offer help, particularly if such should bear a price. I thank you, my lady. You pull out your magic map. You feel a strange pulling sensation. Wand is missing. You will pay for your insolence. The wizard keeps close dibs on his wand. Don't let him find it missing next time. You unlock. You carefully replace the map. The cabinet. Drop to your hands and knees and hide the item under your bed. I am hungry. Prepare me a meal at once. Mananan is impatiently waiting for his food. His stomach rumbles as he drums his gnarled fingers on the table. You'd better feed him quickly, or dire consequences may result. Curious, Master. A dangerous mindset, boy. I know, but I was wondering, how powerful are you? Impudence! Not at all, I was just wondering, if Ludor were to be invaded, would it be well protected by your magic? <laughs> of course, irrelevant though that notion is, invaders would never reach these shores. My spells over the wind and weather would destroy any hostiles long before they caught sight of this land. 
you surmise that you won't be taking any boat trips while he's around. As for invaders from the west, they would only meet their demise in the endless scorched wasteland. And even if they endured, they would never survive an encounter with that desert beauty. Manannan's mouth flickers upwards slightly in an odd manner. You suppress the urge to probe his mind more on the subject. 